Hi and welcome to a competitive EDH deck tech video about Tuvasa the Sunlit on Enchantress Stacks build. This bunt Enchantress will draw you a card when you cast your first enchantment spell each turn. But it will also grow bigger, this Merfolk Shaman will get plus one plus one for each enchantment that you control. That means that this deck will always turn into a Voltron deck regardless of what enchantments that you choose to include. But I wanna emphasize that Voltron is actually plan B. Plan A is a combo involving enchantments. And how this deck's game plan is going to flow is that we're gonna be casting some stacks, enchantments and draw a card with Tuvasa. Meaning that we're digging through a deck and finding more stacks pieces, more enchantments that we can cast to draw more cards. And eventually we are aiming at drawing into this thing and completing a combo with Rest in Peace, with Helm of Dominance, the Helm of Peace combo. So how this combo functions in short is that Rest in Peace will remove all graveyards from the game and make sure that whenever a card ends up in a graveyard from anywhere, it will go into exile instead. And what Helm of Peace does, if you activate Helm of Peace for one mana, it will start to attempt to put cards into a graveyard until a creature card is revealed this way or until x equal to 1 cards have been put into a graveyard and you will put that creature card into play under your control and you will sacrifice Helm of Peace. This will never happen and what's gonna happen is that the entire deck will be sent into exile because Helm of Peace will continue to try and put a card into a graveyard and that will never happen so it will just repeat, repeat, repeat until the entire deck is gone. A downside to this combo is that you're only able to kill one player a turn because you have to tap Helm of Dominance. In the end, however, this is actually a really strong combo because it utilizes Rest in Peace, which is the best anti-graveyard stacks piece within this game. This is a perfect combo to go for with Tuvasa the Sunlit as your commander. But we might need more combos inside this deck because we're actually lacking tutors. We don't have the access to black tutors at all. Green is really good at finding lands and creatures. Blue is really good at finding artifacts. And that's nice because that will help out finding Helm of Dominance. And white is decent at finding enchantments. For example, we're really going to need Enlightened Tutor. Maybe the best tutor for this deck. Oh well. Here we have one of those other possible enchantment combos, Squirrel Nest and Earthcraft. This combo is called Squirrelcraft. You enchant Squirrel Nest onto a basic land, then you tap that basic land and activate its new ability and generate a 1-1 green Squirrel token. And then you activate Earthcraft and tap that 1 green Squirrel token to untap the basic land. This will now generate infinite Squirrel tokens that are tapped. The big downside to this combo is that you're gonna win your next upcoming turn. So when you assemble this combo, you're giving your opponents one turn to react to it. Fair and square. Another big downside to this combo is that the cards are actually not that good. Squirrel Nest is cute. Generating a 1-1 green token each turn is not really great. It's not amazing. And Earthcraft it's not that great either. It's usable for something, like you can now suddenly tap your commander to Vasa to add Bant Mana if you have all four three different basic lands in play. And that's usable, it's not useless, but it's not amazing either. But I have one more enchantment combo to show you. Here is Decree of Silence together with Solemnity. If we begin with reading Decree of Silence, whenever an opponent plays a spell, counter that spell and put a depletion counter on Decree of Silence. If there are three or more depletion counters on Decree of Silence, sacrifice it. Then you can cycle it to basically counter a spell as well, so that's a secondary use for it. And Solemnity is supposed to be a stacks enchantment that prevents counters from being put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments or lands. This means that the Decree of Silence will never get depletion counters placed on it and it will exist forever, encountering every single spell your opponents are playing for the rest of the game. This lockdown combo is not bulletproof, however, there are ways to get out of this mess, for example with Abrupt Decay, that can't be counterspelled, and you can destroy Solemnity with the Abrupt Decay. 
and Abrupt Decay is a card that should exist inside every green-black deck by the way. But this combo actually have two major problems. The first one is quite obvious. Decree of Silence costs 8 mana. And that is a lot of mana. That means that this combo is actually quite slow and rather difficult to assemble. The other major problem is that Solemnity is something of a meta card and not really that good. It's not going to affect a great deal of things. It is a stax enchantment and in some scenarios it actually will have a great impact. But in general consensus amongst the big population of CEDH decks out there, this enchantment doesn't do much. But don't worry, with some creativity you can find some solid game plan pathways on how you could assemble this combo. Here I have attunement, open the vaults and replenish. Cast Attunement, and because of your Enchantress Commander, you will also draw a card. Then activate Attunement's ability by returning it to your hand. Then draw 3 cards, then choose and discard 4 cards. But because of Tuvasa the Sun Lit, it becomes draw 4 cards and discard 4 cards. What you need to do now is basically draw and discard until you have found Solemnity and Decree of Silence, and simply discard them to your graveyard. They are now inside your graveyard, and I think you can guess the rest. You need to find Open the Vaults or Replenish, and you will basically cast one of these spells and put all your enchantments into play from your graveyard. This is actually a solid pathway game plan to assemble any form of enchantment slash artifact combo. And well, Replenish don't return artifacts, but Open the Vaults will. Just don't do this if you have your Rest in Peace in play. And of course, there is a lot of different variations to attunement out there. I guess that I should mention these enchantments as well. Starfield of Nyx and Opalescence. They will turn every non-global, that is a non-aura enchantment into a creature with power and toughness equal to converted mana cost. And suddenly you have an army. But also, Starfield of Nyx will return an enchantment from your graveyard back into play at the beginning of your turn. I would like to recommend Starfield of Nyx, even though it's actually an expensive and quite slow enchantment, this kind of deck is built around in making it slow, making it into a slugfest, a staxy game state. Because your opponents are going to be destroying your enchantments to get rid of the problem that you're creating for them, and then Starfield of Nyx could bring back those enchantments and help you go the distance because we're actually playing for the long game and winning with some form of combo down the line eventually or Voltron to Vasa backup plan B. As you can see there's a lot of different game plan IDs that you can have with this Bant enchantment commander. And I like that, that means that the sunlit merfolk can be built in a lot of different ways. There is no only one build for her. And that is a really important part when it comes to stacks cards. So we're going to be including a lot of different enchantments that is performing a form of interaction against our opponents. I would like to emphasize, however, that don't include any form of auras or any form of cards that is going to help you achieve some form of Voltron win with Tuvasa the Sunlit. Your stacks enchantments is gonna give you a Voltron potential on automatic. Now you need to give every single stacks enchantment that you're going to consider including inside your build. For example, Ghostly Prison. Some people actually might consider it. Now Ghostly Prison is decent and okay in casual games. In CEDH, it doesn't do anything. Just like Solemnity usually doesn't do anything. Don't play Ghostly Prison. Instead, look at these three enchantments. Eidolon of Rhetoric, Back to Basic and Ground Seal. All of these three enchantments have great use against other combos and other decks out there. And there are of course some more available copies. In fact, a lot of more copies, like even Mana Maze. Here is another really interesting copy to Back to Basic. Okay, it's not really a copy, but it's hurting multicolor decks, making it really difficult to cast multicolor spells and this will also hurt us when we want to cast our commander because that's bant colors that's free colors so you need to think about how you're going to fix your color fixing outside your lands 
if you're going to include Hall of Gemstone. I wanna mention Shoke. So Shoke prevents islands from untapping, both basic and non-basic. So what we can do here is that we include a lot of non-basic lands that are tap for blue mana, but they are not islands themselves. This means that we can't play back to basics anymore, because now we have a bunch of non-basic lands inside our deck. So here you need to think about what is going to be more effective against your opponents. If your opponents are playing heavy blue, mono blue, like Teferi Shane Veil, then Shoke is going to be better. If the most of your opponents are playing 4 to 5 or maybe 3 colors, and not that many blue players, then I think back to basic is going to be the better card. So yes, this is a deck that needs to adapt itself towards the meta of your playgroup. Artifacts, on the other hand, are usually really popular, and here you have three good enchantments that are good versus artifacts and hating on artifacts, like Stony Silence, you've probably heard of that one, Energy Flux, which is a stronger version than Kataki, and Hymn of the Radix. And of course, if you're going down this road of hating on artifacts, I do recommend Nullrod and Kataki. But there are two more really nasty things, like Seal of Cleansing and Aura of Silence. Aura of Silence is actually doing a very similar thing to Hymn of the Radix. Oh yeah, you can hate on enchantments as well. Uh, don't include this card. This is probably one of the best counters towards this deck. Aura of Flux. It's the cousin to Energy Flux. You can also include some simple removals, like Grasp of Fate and Suspension Field. There's a lot of variations to Suspension Field, by the way, and they are quite good. Removing a creature and drawing a card. It is sorcery speed, so don't heavily include them. A more expensive version is Cast Out. It, it is actually playable. Four mana is a lot of mana, that's a problem. But because of Flash and because of Cycling and because of a commander, it will cantrip and also this will remove permanents, not only creatures. It is playable. You could include Variety Circle, which will help you get past blockers if you're trying to go for a combat damage beatdown with your commander. And it also draws cards, so that's cute and kinda good. As for Told will help you cast spells without paying mana for them, that is going to be good in the long run. And Enchantress Presence is another copy of your commander, you could say. Here I have two obscured and a little bit weird enchantments. Psychic Surgery is a counter towards top decking tutors like Vampiric Tutor, Imperial Seal, Mystical Tutor, cards that actually see play, but whenever someone decides to activate a fetch land, it will trigger as well. It's not that amazing, but I would like to show it anyway. It exists. The Something Nodes is actually a bit playable. We are not usually going to have that many creatures in play. We're gonna have a really big and stompy commander. So the last creature that will eventually die will probably be our commander to Vasa the Sunlit. And that means that this will sit around and kill a lot of other creatures, mana dogs for your opponents and weaker commanders. Eventually this will kill your commander, but at that point I think that's fine. Search for a Skanta. I would like to mention this enchantment just because I have been talking about attunement with Replenish. So Search of a Skanta will help out with this too, and it will flip when we have 7 or more cards inside our graveyard to an amazing land, which will give us more mana, but also an, uh, what is it there now, impulse ability for free mana. I hope I have been able to showcase the great many varieties of how this deck could be possibly built. The last enchantments that I want to showcase are some enchantments that actually exist inside every single CDH deck, because they are just that good, like Mystic Remore. Carpet of Flowers, Sylvan Library, Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth, and then of course we could play Fertile Ground. Fertile Ground don't really see that much play inside other CDH decks, but I do recommend this one. In the beginning of this video I did mention that green were good at fetching lands, like with crop rotation and something that I actually like, Pierce Whim. These two cards will let you find a whatever land from your deck and put it directly into play, like Sira's Sanctum, that will most likely tap for a tremendous amount of mana, and that will help out to possibly cast Decree of Silence. 
Another possible great land that we could tutor for is Tabernacle of the Pendracle Veil. Vale. We don't play that many creature cards, so we're not going to pay that much mana for it. But our opponents could. This is a really good anti-creature stacks land. Something that I actually consider really important for your build is to make sure that you at the best consistently make sure that every opening hand will produce Tavasa the Sunlit Bunt Commander for 3 mana on turn 2. Because then you can cast on a stacks piece on turn 3 and draw a card and start your engine going. Mana dogs are always good, play them. However, it's not that terrible if you resolve a stacks card on turn 1 and turn 2 and then resolve your commander on turn 3. That is okay. And it is absolutely possible to build Tavasa the Sunlit on a budget and she will perform okay. And in this video I've been showcasing a lot of expensive cards like Tabernacle of the Pentacle Veil, vale, Helm of Dominance and Sarah Sanctum. You don't absolutely need those cards you could replace them with other things. But also, if you want to go for this graveyard strategy where you're filling your graveyard with enchantments and then reanimating all of them in one big boom, then the Helm of Peace, which includes a Rest in Peace and the Helm of Dominance, isn't really a good combo to go for, so they don't really synergize together. So you could skip the Helm of Dominance and make a more budget build that way. And in the description below of this video, you will find a link to my tapped out page with this build how I have put together to Vasa the Sunlit. In any case, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been an amazing, fun video. Enchantments is actually a possible thing to go for. Enchantments is actually a bit rare, so when you show up with this deck against your opponents, they're usually not prepared to deal with enchantments. So that is an upside for this commander. I also believe that this commander will grow in power because I do think that we're gonna see more and more good stacks enchantments that could go into this build. In any case, thank you so much for watching and take care. I'll see you guys next time.